Hi everybody, I'm Evan and I'm from SciTech and we're going to be doing a fantastic science experiment here looking at how heat affects water density. So I'll run you through the equipment I'm going to be using. I have two jars of nice warm water here, two jars of nice cool water, a couple of plastic trays, red and blue food colouring with a couple of droppers. And I also have some thermometers. And the star of the show is going to be this clear plastic clipboard. You'll find out about that in a moment. So you can see here, I've got one jar of nice warm water sitting at about 43 degrees and some nice cool water sitting at 12 and a half degrees. This is fantastic. It's great to have a little bit of a difference in temperature here. What I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of food coloring in each of these jars. Blue for cold and red for hot. Now, hot water has more energy in it. The temperature is more energy. And that causes the water molecules to move around fairly quickly. You'll notice that the colouring we put in our cool water is going to take quite a while to spread through the jar. But the colouring in our warm water should spread through it fairly quickly. So you can notice almost instantly this warm water is spreading that red food colouring around really quickly through the jar. Whereas the blue food colouring in the cold water is staying, well, it's not really mixing. What we're seeing here, what you're witnessing is a convection current. The heat in this liquid causing it to mix around. We can leave that for a few more minutes. In fact, this is something you could try at home. And you could see how hot that water needs to be to mix really, really quickly and uh, how long it's gonna take our cold water before it mixes through. I'm a, a little impatient, so I'm gonna give these a bit of a stir right now. Now, if we waited for the natural convection of the water to mix it, it would take a long time. But uh, if I mix it, I can get that nice and blue. In nature, it's not gonna be someone with a pipette doing this, it's going to be a storm, or a river meeting an ocean that is going to mix this water up. Now, I mentioned at the start that hot water or hot air is less dense than cold. And what that means is if we put our warm water on top of our cold water, it should stay there. And this bit's gonna be a little bit tricky. I need to turn this upside down without spilling too much of it. And this is where that clipboard comes in. <sighs> Three, two, one. Not too bad. And now, I need to remove the clipboard. So I don't know if you've ever seen a magician pull a tablecloth out and leave all of the cups and plates and glasses uh, sitting on the table. I'm gonna be attempting that, but with our jars of water. Now we may spill a little bit, but that's okay, as long as most of it stays where it should be. Voila. And as you can see, we're getting a little bit of water mixing. You might notice it's getting a little bit purple in there, but our warm red water is sitting on top of our cold blue water and it's gonna stay that way for quite some time. You know what? I might just move this one off to the side for the moment. Because what happens if we do it the other way around? Once again, warm and cool water, sitting at about 43, 44 degrees and 17 and a half, brilliant. And we'll do our blue food coloring and our red. And 
And once again, we'll give them a bit of a mix. Now the trick, if you want to try and uh, do this at home, is to have a jar or something with a nice flat wide rim. It gives you a lot of surface area to make that nice tight seal. So let's try it again with the cold water on top and let's see what happens. All right. And here we go. And what you can see right away is that dense cold water mixing all the way through with our warm red water. And within a few seconds, that whole column of water is completely mixed and nice and purple. Let's compare it to that first one. Now this is a convection current. The temperature of the water influences how it mixes. And we see this all the time in nature in our oceans. The sunlight beaming down on the ocean near the equator, heating up the water at the top. And when we get towards the North and South Pole, the cooling water sinking down and mixing through our water column. And these, well, this one here should stay like this for quite some time. Anyway, I think this is a wonderful experiment you can try at home, try with different temperatures of water, see if you can find uh, maybe some other ways of changing the density of our water. I hear if you use salt water and fresh water, that's gonna give you a very similar effect. But I'll leave that up to you to find out. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.